Hello and welcome to this video. This is Corey from the Bonk Scholar YouTube channel. I'm here with my best-selling book, Sight Reading and Harmony. If you don't have it yet, you can get either the digital or the hard copy version from links below this video. In this video, I will be discussing the uh, another chord chart here from part four uh, from this book. Uh, the first thing I want to say is, is I, I, I think I mentioned in the book and I think I make it pretty clear that this chord chart or all of these chord charts here in part four are really more for advanced students. So really, they're on, it only applies really to grade eight, the grade eight line here. So if you were a total beginner with sight reading, uh, you might want to just skip this video. You're not, this won't make any sense to you if you're a total beginner. But uh, if you are not a total beginner and you know your notes well, and uh, you can actually play some of the chords from grade eight line, then this is a perfect video for you in being able to understand what the chords are and how to read one of these charts. So in this particular video, I am going to discuss uh, number 28, page 28 in Sight Reading and Harmony. So let's get going on this. So we have primary, secondary, and cadences. Let me explain what this, what this means. If you don't know, the primary chords are either one, four, or five. One, four, five chords in both major and minor keys are called the primary chords. And uh, the secondary chords are all the other ones, and cadences are these points. Cadences are usually the, the two or three chords that precede these fermatas here. Those are like ending points right here. So the two cadences we'll be talking about are these here and these right here. So you have to understand that these chord charts, I devise these to, as sort of cheat sheets. And the best way to do it is through process of elimination. And that is if you pick one chord right here, like say F major, that is the one chord in the key of F major, that is, um, that's, that's the chord we're going to look for first. So you can eliminate a lot of chords. You know, if this has a, a C sharp in it, you can just toss that one out completely. That's not an F major chord. To be a little more specific about it, F major chords have to have F, A, and C in them here. And that's why I put this little cheat sheet down here with chords. These are all the possibilities of the triads using the letters in the musical alphabet. We have FAC. FAC. That's the F chord, FAC. So what we're going to do is we're going to find all the chords that are where you, if you line them up, it has an F, an A, and a C. And there is going to be one double note usually because there's four notes and so one will have to be doubled. So usually, in most cases, it's the F because that's the tonic note. So usually you're going to have two Fs, an A, and a C, although there are always a few exceptions. So let's, let's go and let's find the first FAC chord. Well, right here, we have two Fs, an A, and a C. So this is um, F major chord. So I'll just put uh, I'll just put a one here, like that. Roman numeral one for F. Um, let's see F F A C. Well, what do you know? Another one here. But there's a difference. See, they're they're just sort of just scrambled a little bit differently. So this. There, the A is here, but that A gets put up there and the C goes down there. So they're just uh, rearranged a little bit, but it's still the same chord and there's still root position because F is on the bottom, see? So let's find another FAC chord. Well, we have 
Look, we have F, A, C, and then another C here. So we have F, A, C, another one. We have a one. That's another F chord. But look at what happens. Do you see the base is, an, is the A, the base is an F? So when the, when the third note, or the, the, the second note, which forms the third of the triad, when that is on the bottom, it's the first inversion. So we're going to put a little six here, meaning first inversion. I'm not going to explain that now, but uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll explain that uh, maybe in future videos or maybe later in this one if there's time, what that six means. For now, just memorize it means first inversion. You don't have to know why, just remember it is. The one six is a one chord in first inversion. Now let's find another FAC chord. <clears throat> well, that's out, that's out, that's out, um, that's out, FAC. Here's one right here. So we have an F major chord here. Uh, that's out, two Fs, an A and a C. That's, that's one right here. Um, let's see, FAC, this is another one here. And that's in first inversion, just like this one here. In fact, it's the exact same chord as this one here. And with this one's out, let me see, we have two C's, an A and an E. Oh, missed it by that much. <laughs> that's my Maxwell Smart impersonation, if you know who Maxwell Smart was. Uh, this is, we have a C, we have a G and an E, B flat, no, that's out. And this definitely is, is in here. That's F, we have two Fs, an A and a C. So that's one here. So out of all of these chords in this example, and let me just remind you that these are partial corrals. These are only like usually the first four measures of a full corral. So they're not full corrals. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So a total of seven chords out of all of those are F major chords. Now let's find the ones that, that the chords that belong to C major, which in relation to F major form the five chord, because if you have F, F, G, so you go F, G, A, B, C, okay? F, G, A, B, C, you go up the musical alphabet, F to C is a fifth, they're five notes apart. So that's why this is the fifth, or known as the dominant. So C major chords have to have a C, E, and a G. C, E, G, C, E, G, C, E, G. Memorize that. Be able to do that in your sleep. So we're going to find all the C, E, G chords here. And this can also include if there are flats or sharps on those notes. So the only thing that we have to do is make sure that the letters are there. The C, E, and G letters, whether they're flats or sharps, that's, that's going to modify the quality of the chord, like either major or minor or diminished or augmented or whatever, but it's not going to, uh, you know, change, change the whole theory, you know, behind the chord because we'll have those letters in place. So C, E, G, C, E, G, C, E, G. So here we have a C, we have two C's, an E and a G. Well, definitely there's one, so we're going to put a five there. That's the dominant chord because this is a C and that's on the bottom, that's, a, that's the root position. So we don't need to do an inversion for that. And that's out C, E, G, C, E, G. Here's one here. So we have a C here. We have two G's and an E, so C, G, E. Look at, see the, mid, the bottom note is an E, it's not a C. So if we go C, E, G, 
The bottom note is the E. It's a first inversion. First inversion. I'm going to put a little six there because that's a first inversion. This, of course, is the root position. That, uh, that's one. I don't have to talk about that. Let me see. C, E, G, C, E, G. Ah, oh, look at this. So we have, we have two C's here. We have an E and a G. So once again, we have a five chord or a C major chord. And just like this one here, it's also in first inversion. So we're going to put a five, six there. And uh, let's compare this chord with this chord now. Well, they, they have the same notes. We have, we have a C, uh, an E, and two Gs. Then we have a C, uh, let me see. We have two Cs, an E, and a G here. Yeah, here we go. So, let me see. It takes a little while to unscramble these. G, G. So this one has two Gs, a C and an E. This one actually has two Cs, a G and an E. But they're still the same type of chord, and they're the same inversion. So th those, are, those are very much similar. They're related. They're the same, but they're different at the same time. C, E, G, C, E, G, not that one, C, E, G. So we have two C's, an E, ah, missed it by that much. So that's not one, C, E, G, C, E, G. Look, C, E, G, ah, but there's an extra note in there, a B, C, E, G, B. So if you take C, E, G, you notice how they're skipping letters? Now. What, what do you get if you skip a G? You get a, a B. So if you have a B, I'm going to put it here in parentheses here. If you go C, E, G, and you add another note a third above that B, that's the seventh. That's the seventh. So seventh chords have to have complete triads under them in order to be seventh chords. So seventh chords are like additional uh, like an, 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 a new, an added note to a, to just a standard triad. So we have this chord is C, E, G, but also with an added B on there. So we will classify this also as a five chord, but um, no, that's the wrong place. Sorry. It's here right here this is this is a five chord but it's a five seven five seven we just put a seven there that means that going from c up to b is seven so start with c so we're going to count up c d e f g a b seven <laughs> okay, C E or C D E F G A B seven. So if you go from C to B, that proves that it's a seven. You just count up the letters of the musical alphabet. So this is a five seven, and it is root position because the C is on the bottom. That's a five seven one. Very typical progression here. So we found all of these so far, the C major chords or the C7 chords. And those are one, two, three, four. So we had seven of these one, seven F major chords, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have one, two, three, four, five chords. There's not much left, really not much left. And actually this, we, we, we found that one. So that, that C7 was here. I like to separate the, just the normal triads from the seventh chords here. And now let's look for this one here, B flat major. B flat major will be a BDF chord, BDF. But remember, the B will have a flat there, 
because of the flat key signature. But all we have to look for is BDF. If you have a BDF, then it's going to be, uh, assuming that that's a B flat, that's going to be a four chord because if you start with F, F, G, A, B, that's four above F. So let's find that one. Well, that's, that's not, that's not, so we have, we do have two B flats here. So we have a B flat here, a B flat here, a D and an F. When I looked at this first, I thought that was another note. So I was thinking I made a mistake, but there's no mistake here. That is a B flat major chord here. So we're gonna put a four there, Roman numeral four, if we're in the key of F. If, if this is related to F, it's a four chord. And then, um, so we've taken care of this one. Now we only have uh, like three chords left. And those are those chords. So let's figure out, this is where the process of elimination comes in. So you know that these three chords have to be here. Well, let's figure out which ones are which. D minor, well, that's pretty easy. We just find one with a D in it, right here. So this has to be D minor. Uh, more specifically, we're going to have a DFA chord. DFA, DFA, DFA. Memorize that. DFA. We have two Ds, an F, and an A. So this is a D minor chord. In the key of F, if it's related to F major, if you're not, if it hasn't sort of modulated to another key area, if you're still uh, clearly in the key of F, D minor is the six chord, the minor six chord in the key of F. That's because if you take F, G, A, B, C, D, you have six. So from F to D is six. So we're gonna put a, uh, a minor six there, a small six. So V, I, D minor. So we've taken care of that. Now we have to find uh, A major and A minor. So the, uh, the uh, A major chord here is I, I say, I specify it's the five of a six. And we, we don't have to understand that right now necessarily, but just, I don't want to talk about five over six. Let, let's just ignore that for now. I don't want to get into that, but let's just find A major. So A, C, E, A, C, E, A, C, E, A, C, E. Really memorize that. Oh, I made a mistake here. Oh, I, I made an, I was thinking back. Uh, the D minor here, I missed this one here. So that's also, I should have seen that before. So we have the D minor chord is, is there. That's really the same, exactly the same chord there. Okay, then here we have, because, okay, A major, let's go back to the A major chord. A, C, E. So A major, you're gonna have a C sharp. A, C sharp, E. Put a little sharp there. There's your sharp. So we have, we have two A's, a C sharp and an E. So that's clearly an A major chord. So we're gonna put, and um, this is the, um, I guess the five, five of six. If you don't know what that is, that's, um, and, and it's a little advanced right now, but um, this basically leads to that. That's like the dominant of that. I'll have more videos on on a, like secondary dominance and that sort of thing. But uh, it's, it's the only thing you really need to know now is this is an A major chord. Just, you don't have to worry about the five over six. So that's the A major chord here. And then A minor, of course, is here. That's just a plain A, C, E with no sharp. We have A, C, E, A, C, E, A, C, E. It's right here. So this is, this is a, in the key of F, 
in the key of F, A is 3. So F, G, A, 3. But see the bass note? Well, we have, uh, we have two Cs, an A, and an E. So the bass note is not A. That's the root note. A, C is in the middle there. The C is on the bottom, so it's first inversion. So because it's first inversion, we're going to put a 6 there. Just like these here, just like these first inversion chords here. So we've done that. We've taken care of that. So by a little logic and process of elimination and using our little uh, cheat sheet down here for the, for the seven uh, families of triads, which you should memorize, you can easily figure out what all those chords are. So what I would suggest you do is take uh, sight reading and harmony, take an example, write it out or print it out uh, on a separate page. Don't do it on your book. You don't want to write in your book uh, if you can avoid it. So what, what you want to do is just practice this technique on various pages if you can. But last but not least, uh, before we finish, let's just go over these cadences. So we have a 6, 5, 1. That's very typical for a cadence. 6, 5, 1. 6, 5, 1. That's, uh, that happens very frequently in, uh, in music. So there we have a cadence. And uh, there we have, uh, that. this is just called an, an authentic cadence because we have 5 to 1. And then here we have another 6, 5, 1, but the only difference is this 5 adds a 7. So we have another authentic cadence here, 6, 5, 1, but this 5 is a 7. So we've got these, and we figured out all of these chords. Now, can you play it? <laughs> That's the thing. So what you want to do is, if you can play this, play through it, and spend as long as you need to spend on each chord to hear the chord and hear the function of the chord. And... Uh, I, th I, I, I think that this will really help you understand how the chords work. But remember that you have to do this with lots of examples. So the more of these you do in sight reading and harmony, and there are like 150 of these. So you, you'll never run out of them. You can do one for each day for 150 days. And you'll learn a lot about chords if you simply go through the grade eight line. This is the grade eight line and use these techniques and it will help you out a lot. So thank you for joining me today. I hope this helped you out. Stay tuned for more videos like this in this series.